Hey, what's up guys? My name is Achan and welcome back to my OpenGL series. So today we're going to be talking all about index buffers. Last time we talked about shaders and also before that, vertex buffers. Check out those videos if you haven't already. But today we're going to be focusing on something new, something called an index buffer. Now, before I kind of define what an index buffer actually is and we get into talking about why we want to use them and what they actually are, let's, think up, let, let's just think of a basic problem that we might have in graphics programming. We want to draw a square. Up until now, we've just been drawing a triangle. That's it, just one single triangle on the screen. Everything's been fine. It looks like the way that we're kind of doing that in our code is pretty efficient. However, let's try and draw a square. So what do we need to do to actually draw a square? Well, everything that our GPU actually does comes down to triangles. We might talk later about why that is, but for now, just picture a triangle as pretty much the smallest number of vertices we need to represent one flat kind of plane with a normal that is with a, with a surface normal that is pointing in a single direction. Because of that, GPUs tend to kind of use triangles as their rendering kind of primitive, right? So everything's based on triangles. So when we try and draw two squares, or rather, sorry, when we try and draw a square, it's really just a triangle, right? Or specifically two triangles. Anything we draw is made up of triangles. So a square is just two triangles, right? One two, that's it, two triangles. So let's try and do that with our current setup and see what happens. So over here, we have basically this set of vertices here. In fact, let's just, let's, let's just run this application and see what we've actually got. We've got this triangle here, nice blue triangle. If we take a look at the code, we've got these three vertices. If we try and draw a square, well, let's think about that for a minute. I'm just gonna open Illustrator here so I can draw you a diagram. Instead of us kind of drawing our triangle like this, which is what it is right now, we want to kind of draw a square out of two triangles. And the way we can do that is just by drawing two triangles like that, right? So we kind of have one triangle over here and one triangle over here. And drawing those two triangles separately, kind of like that and then like that, or however you want to do it. In fact, we're probably going to do it like this and then like that. So that's how we're going to actually make up that square. So let's talk about which positions these might actually be. So this one over here we know is kind of going to be negative 0.5 in both X and Y. That's kind of what we've got over here, right? The next one, if we come over here and we kind of draw this in an anti-clockwise fashion, then we're going to be drawing this vertex first, then this vertex, then this vertex, right? So if we go back to our source code, that's basically going to be negative 0.5 in X and Y. This one's going to be positive 0.5 and then still keeping negative 0.5 for y and then we're going to lift y up to positive 0.5 and also keep x like that so so if we just run this program now we should have that first triangle drawn and you can see that's what we get okay so now we need to draw the second triangle so let's start off with drawing this vertex here then this vertex here then this vertex here to kind of keep going in a counterclockwise fashion so back to our code and we're going to add some vertices here i'm just going to get rid of this six here so that we can have as many as we need i'm going to copy and paste this vertex position because it's going to be exactly the same of course these two vertices are actually the same. And then I'm going to add one more vertex for that'll be the top left corner, which is going to be negative 0.5x and positive 0.5y. And then finally, this vertex over here is also kind of the same as this vertex. So that'll be the same as the very, very first one here. So now we have six vertices. If I come down over here, we need to adjust the size of our vertex buffer so that it can actually take in all of this memory. So I'm going to, instead of just changing this to be 12, I'm gonna make it six times two time size of float because of course each vertex here is a size of two floats and we have six vertices. It's just a little bit easier to read. If I scroll down here, the other thing I need to change is instead of just drawing three, we of course need to draw six. So in my GL draw arrays, I'm going to change this to six and then hit F5. All right, there we go, pretty cool. So we've got an actual square now. Or well, specifically, this is a little bit rectangular because our window is actually not, not square. So that seems pretty good. I mean, we've managed to draw a square. It wasn't too difficult, but there is something a little bit suboptimal about the way that we're actually drawing this square. And specifically, let's take a look at our vertices. So back over here in our actual vertex kind of array that we have here, you can see that what we're actually doing is we're repeating ourselves. We've got this vertex over here twice, right? And we've got this one, this first and last one is also exactly the same. These aren't completely unique, which means what we're actually doing is we're kind of duplicating our memory. We're storing these same bytes or the same vertex positions in our GPU memory multiple times. And that's a little bit wasteful because, well, GPU memory isn't just infinite and we do wanna keep that down. So what we can actually do is use something called an index buffer, which allows us to reuse existing vertices. Because if you think about it, what we really want to say is draw kind of 
these three vertices like this, and then maybe draw these three vertices to make up the second triangle. This is much easier. This is gonna be much easier if I just show you on this diagram, I don't know why I'm doing this. So let's go back to Illustrator. It would be fantastic if we, if we could just say, and let me just change my color over here to maybe red. If we could just say, I wanna draw this vertex, then I wanna draw this vertex, then I wanna draw this vertex, and then I wanna draw this vertex again, this new vertex over here, and then this first vertex again right? Because that would be all we would need to really say to draw this part and then just draw that part as well like that. Okay. So we want to avoid kind of repeating ourselves or specifically just having the exact same memory multiple times. That's very wasteful. Now, obviously for a square or for a rectangle, it might not seem wasteful because there's not much to it. I mean, yes, we do have 50% more data in our vertex buffer, because we're storing two extra vertices instead of storing four, we're storing six. However, when you think about a 3D model, right? Maybe you've got a character in your game or a spaceship or whatever it may be, right? Every single triangle that makes up that ship or that character is going to be connected to another triangle, right? Which means that you're immediately already repeating at least two vertices. And then maybe there's another triangle up there, right? So you can kind of see how this just kind of escalates out of control and you might have so many extra vertices. Not only that, but when you're actually rendering rendering 3D graphics and potentially in like, maybe you're using something like physically based rendering, your vertices might be pretty big. You might have vertex positions, normals, texture coordinates, binormals, tangents, colors. You might, that might all be in one vertex. And if you have to duplicate that entire kind of buffer that, that, that makes up that actual vertex again and again and again, that's just going to be completely unrealistic, right? Just having a simple index instead is going to be much quicker and much more efficient. So let's, let's just, let's just convert this kind of vertex buffer that we have now. Let's add an index buffer to it and remove those kind of that duplicate redundant memory. So if I go back to my source code over here, what I'm going to do is make an index buffer. So the way that we do this in kind of, well, Here's another way to think about it, really. If we get rid of all of the redundant stuff inside this array, right, so that we only have unique vertex positions here, what I'll do is I'll get rid of this one because it's a duplicate and I'll get rid of that last one because it's a duplicate, right? So now what we have is basically this. And if I go back to Illustrator, just so you guys can visualize this a little bit easier, I'm gonna make this color green or something like that, right? This, this is our index zero, this is index one, this is index two, and this is index three, okay? So zero, one, two, three. Each line over here, I've kind of divided it line by line, is a single vertex. And of course, if we kind of number these vertices starting from zero, we get a sort of index. So if I was to create an unsigned int array here called indices, and I just wanted to basically draw that same square that I had before, what I could say is use the first vertex, the second and the third vertex to kind of get this first triangle over here like that. So that would be zero, one, and two. If we kind of refer to our vertices like this as if they were indexed, which they are, we kind of get this order, right? So zero, one, two. And then for the second triangle, I want to do two, three, and zero, right? Because that's this position, two, right? Three, and zero, which is how we can kind of draw this triangle, the second one. So two, three, and zero. And that is actually an index buffer. We've just created exactly the data we need to tell OpenGL how to render this triangle or rather this square without using, without providing it with redundant or duplicate vertex positions and all of that, or vertices, I should, I should just say, because obviously in this case, we've just got positions, but they could be, there could be a lot more data in there. So now all that remains is actually, instead of having this data here, these indices here on the CPU, we want to actually send them to the GPU and then tell OpenGL to render using them. Okay. And the way that we do that is very, very similar to the way that we actually make a vertex buffer. So let's copy this. I'm going to put this after our kind of vertex attribute stuff, just paste it here. I'm going to rename this IBO, which stands for index buffer object, because it's kind of like our ID or our object, which represents this particular index buffer. We're going to generate a buffer the exact same way that we generate a normal buffer. The only real difference here is that instead of binding this as an array buffer or specifically to that slot, to that GL array buffer slot, we're binding it to a GL element array buffer. Okay. And so I'll just 
make sure that I'm doing that for both the bind buffer and buffer data. The buffer that we're binding is of course this IBO that we've just generated. And finally, when we supply it with data, instead of supplying it with positions, we supply it with these indices. So I'll just write indices. And then of course the size of them is in this case going to be six unsigned ints. Now keep in mind that I've chosen to use unsigned ints here because we'll probably likely be using unsigned ints in the future. However, you can just use unsigned char or unsigned short if you want to kind of save memory. Char of course being one byte, short being two bytes. Integers are four bytes, so they are a lot more memory than say a char. However, obviously you have the restrictions of if you use a char, you only, an, an unsigned char, you only have zero to 255. So you can only have 256 different, different indices. Um, we're going to use unsigned ints for all these examples because there's not going to be any measurable performance difference in this case. And in the future, when we have pretty complex models, we'll likely want to be using unsigned ints anyway. The key here is that it has to be unsigned. You cannot use a signed type, okay? It has to be unsigned. More on that later. So down here, uh, I'll just verify that we do have six times unsigned ints, which is exactly what we've got in our actual array. And then we're of course taking it in over here. So looks pretty good, right? So what else do we need to change? Well, the last thing we need to change is our actual draw call. Instead of being GL draw arrays, it becomes GL draw elements. And the mode here is the same. We're drawing triangles. The count is going to be six because we're drawing six indices. This is the number of indices we're drawing, not the number of vertices we're drawing. The type is the type of data that is in the index buffer, which in this case is GL unsigned int. And finally, this is a pointer to that index buffer. Now, because we've got a bound in this actual slot here, we've actually, you can see GL bind buffer, element array buffer. This element array buffer is a slot for index buffers. And we've bound our IBO to there. We don't actually have to put anything here. So I can just write null pointer. And that's it. That's all we've got. This is the actual draw call that draws our triangle using six kind of vertices, right? But you can see obviously our vertex buffer only actually has four vertices and then we've indexed into that. So let's hit F5 to run this program. And you can see we get a beautiful rectangle. Now that's great. I did mention something about these having to be unsigned and this is actually going to lead in great into the next OpenGL episode, but let's just deliberately make some kind of mistake that's pretty easy to accidentally make. Let's just say that instead of writing GL unsigned int for some reason here, I wrote GL int, okay? Looks pretty harmless. I mean, yeah, int unsigned int, is there really that much of a difference? I mean, obviously there is, but let's just say that we didn't know that. Let's hit F5 and look at that. We get a black screen. We get absolutely nothing printing in the console except for that OpenGL version. That what's going on here? Well, what you've done is you've used an invalid enum. You've used int, whereas this buffer or any index buffer has to be made up of unsigned integers, not signed integers, unsigned integers. So of course, in our case, we know what the problem is. We can just bring this back, but you can imagine how some people, when they write this code, might make the mistake. I've made it before, hundreds of times probably, and I've wondered why do I have a black screen? This is going to lead us into our next episode, which is going to be about OpenGL errors and specifically what we can do to deal with errors in OpenGL. Because you can see if I just give it an invalid enum, like I just did right, right then, it's not gonna say anything to us. We have no idea what we've done wrong. Instead, we get a black screen and nothing's working. That can be an absolute nightmare to diagnose and debug, especially if you're new to OpenGL. So next time we're gonna talk about errors and what we can do about them, how we can best kind of get error error reporting back from OpenGL and like basically just make the best of errors in OpenGL so that we can know immediately when something goes wrong and specifically what goes wrong. That's going to be making light of a bad situation because OpenGL, just telling you right now, OpenGL debugging is very, very bad. Anyway, just to recap index buffers, what we've actually done is we've removed any kind of duplicate vertices that we may have here. We've just got absolutely completely unique vertices in this vertex buffer now. What we've done is we've created an index into that vertex buffer to allow us to kind of draw vertices more than once. And then we've actually sent that index buffer to the GPU using this code here. We, well, we've created one. And then we've actually sent this data to the GPU using this line here. And then finally, we're using GL draw elements to draw using an actual element buffer or an index buffer, as they're more commonly called, uh, instead of GL draw arrays, which is just going to kind of draw our vertices sequentially. And that's it. That's how we can draw a square in OpenGL using an index buffer. And that basically what you see there, this setup, vertex buffer, index buffer, and GL draw elements call, 
that is probably how we render 90% of our stuff onto our screen in OpenGL, even in a full on professional like AAA game. That's how you do it. GL draw elements is the function to be using most of the time. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, you can hit that like button. If you want to help support this series and make sure the new episodes come out as often as possible, as well as get a bunch of really cool rewards, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the channel. Massive shout out as always to all of the wonderful supporters, which make this video possible it would be nothing without them. So again, thank you. You can keep talking about what I've just mentioned in this video by going to discord.com forward slash the channel, or just leave a comment below. Do you guys use index buffers? Cause you, you should be okay. I, I, I mean, I like to kind of engage the community, so to speak at the end of these videos and be like, Hey, what do you guys do? But in this case, obviously you're like, I mean, you should be using index buffers for pretty much everything. It's hard to think of anything that shouldn't be using an index buffer, to be honest. So this isn't even really a question. You need to be using index buffers. They're there for a reason and they're, they're wonderful. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Next time we're going to dive into OpenGL errors and see how we can handle them properly. And that's, that's, that, that, that should be quite a fun episode, I think, because the number one thing I, uh, the number one thing I see with people who are new to OpenGL and they're always complaining because something isn't working for them. It's because they're not dealing with their errors correctly. And what they get is a black screen and everything's the worst and they have no idea what's going on. And fair enough, OpenGL doesn't handle this, this well at all, but setting up some basic debugging tools for yourself and some debug code as well is can really go a long way into making sure that you, you are alerted immediately when something is wrong. So I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.